Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is Nassau County Legislator Josh Lafazan. Legislator, I appreciate you coming on once again. Thanks for having me back. Always a pleasure. There's an update into a conversation we've been having now for months, and that's embattled Congressman George Santos is currently in federal custody and, according to his indictment, was charged with seven counts of wire fraud, three counts of money laundering, one count of theft of public funds, and two counts of making false statements to Congress while running for office. What is your response to these charges? Sure. So today confirms what we've known for five months, that George Santos is a liar and a fraud. And not only did Santos break the public trust, but he likely violated federal law in the process. Uh, and so while today is vindication for all of us who have been calling uh, for swift justice, uh, it's also five months that we've had, quite frankly, an effectively useless member of Congress who doesn't sit on committees, who is a pariah in Washington, and now with the federal indictment is likely a criminal. So today's indictment says that enough is enough. It's time the House of Representatives votes to expel George Santos once and for all. You said the term vindication, so I want to bring up a, a point, and that is that this has been a story going on for a while now. Back in September, as you know, a small Long Island paper, the North Shore Leader, first reported fabrications in George Santos's resume before the election. But obviously, as you know, he still won. And the New York Times published an explosive investigation into the New York Republican in December, which really shined a light on all of these fabrications in his resume, questions about his finances, things like that. You've been a vocal critic of George Santos for months now. So how vindicated do you feel today? Very. Uh, you know, ever since the moment the New York Times story dropped in December, we've held almost 30 news conferences. We've brought together Democrats, Republicans and independents from across the third district. Uh, we've continued to build coalitions in our community to pressure law enforcement to move faster, to pressure Republicans to join the chorus of Democrats calling for him to resign. And so uh, it is vindication, but the work is not done. Uh, it seems that Speaker McCarthy has indicated that he's going to allow Santos to remain in Congress even after his indictment, while his, his legal troubles play out, uh, which to me is absurd. It's absolutely preposterous. Whether or not George Santos goes to jail ultimately is up to a judge, prosecutors, and a jury of his peers. But whether or not he serves in the House of Representatives, we very much have a say in, right? My constituents have real problems, right? We have seniors who need help with Medicare and Social Security, veterans who need help with the VA. Uh, and all the while, they can't get through to their member of Congress because he's a little too busy keeping himself out of jail and not busy enough working for the people. And so while his legal troubles play out, he can do so on the side. But he does not get to continue to ride this out and enjoy the infamous spotlight of his own making on the backs of my constituents. It's absolutely not going to be allowed. You feel vindicated, but you sound a little angry, like you want more to happen right at this moment. And I'm interested on what your constituents are saying. George Santos, as you know, represents New York's third congressional district, which consists of both Long Island and parts of Queens. You're a legislator in Long Island. What are the constituents Correct. saying? Sure. So I represent the 18th legislative district. So tens of thousands of folks in the third congressional district are also my constituents. They've been calling my office day after day for months. And so today is bittersweet. My office phone's been ringing off the hook. Folks are excited. They're excited that it finally seems that George Santos will face the consequences for his own action. But it's also bittersweet because it's a sad reminder that once again, Long Island has been made not only a national embarrassment, but international embarrassment has been brought in our community. So people are fed up and exhausted. If George Santos had one shred, one ounce of decency left, he would do the honorable thing and resign. But the fact that Republicans are not moving immediately to expel him, uh, it, it shows that uh, there is a serious issue in, in, in the health of our democracy. Right. When you have an elected official who's under federal indictment with 13 counts and is not expelled, it erodes people's trust in their institutions. And that trust is the very bedrock of our democratic system. And so I'm angry that Kevin McCarthy has indicated he won't move to expel Santos. And I'm angry that more Republicans haven't spoken out, because if 78 Republicans would join with Democrats, put their country over their party and be patriots and move to expel him, we could throw him out tomorrow. You said something interesting in our last conversation at the end of April, which is that George Santos 
was bipartisan in the sense that he brought both Democrats and Republicans together in, you know, really saying that he is he shouldn't be he's not fit to serve. And a number of Republican lawmakers have spoken out against Santos in the last few days. But as you said, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy only said he would tell Santos to resign if he was found guilty. So I do want to read you a quote from McCarthy and I want your response on it. He said, if a person is indicted, they're not on committees. They have the right to vote but they have to go to trial. I know you were frustrated in his response that he didn't call him immediately to resign, but what do you think of that statement? Sure, I think that statement is not analogous here. This is not a member of Congress who's been indicted on one allegation and is proving his or her case. This is George Santos. This is the most prolific liar in the history of American politics. This is somebody who's been accused of campaign finance violation, unemployment fraud, potential sexual harassment, 13 counts in an indictment. And any one of those allegations standing on their own would would merit disqualification. But when taken together, the fact that McCarthy has moved the goalposts, it went from, we'll see the charges, to we'll wait until he's convicted. Uh, It's preposterous. It absolutely is. And, And at the end of the day, the fact that our elected officials are putting party and political expediency before their country, uh, our founders would be rolling over in their graves if they knew that George Santos still had an office on Capitol Hill. Do you think Kevin McCarthy's lukewarm and calling for his resignation because he holds such a slim majority in the House? Absolutely. I mean, George Santos was was the defining vote for the Republican package, uh, you know, that they, they passed last week. And so uh, having a loyal stooge is politically expedient for Kevin McCarthy. But at the end of the day, this is not political. If Santos gets thrown out and there's a special election, a Republican or a Democrat is going to win. Whichever party wins is not important. What's important is that people in my district will have a functioning member of Congress. Uh, There seems to be a disconnect and a lack of seriousness to our politics. I call it the degradation of the seriousness of our politics because people need real help with real life problems. And our folks who represent us in Washington, D.C., They often see this as a game. This is not House of Cards. This is not Veep. This is not a game. People have real issues and they need real help. And every day George Santos is in Congress, it's another day my constituents are hurting and not getting the representation they deserve. Speaking of that representation, you're actually running for the seat that George Santos currently fills. So what do you think is next? Sure. So we launched our campaign in January uh, to start raising money and organizing for 2024. Uh, Because even before the indictment, George Santos said he's running for re-election. And so whether it was Santos or another Republican, we were going to seek the nomination next year. We've raised over $400,000. Our polling is strong. We're building coalitions to move forward. And we believe we're in strong position. There is a possibility that there will be an election before next year. If Santos is indicted and resigns, is pretty much what I've been saying, if he has a shred of decency left and resigns, or if he's expelled, there will be a special election, uh, in which case we believe we'd be a strong candidate uh, to run in that special. But right now, there is no special. Right now, he still remains a member of Congress. And so we're going to continue to campaign and organize uh, to be the Democratic nominee uh, in 2024. You released a statement right after the news of the indictment came to light. And I want you to I want to read part of it to you because it really stuck out to me. You said this. If Santos is not removed, it sends a dark message about the state of our democratic system. What do you think Mm -hmm. that message is? The message is that some people are above the law. That is such a dangerous message to send to people in the United States. If any private citizen did what George Santos did, they would be fired immediately and likely prosecuted and wound up in jail. But the fact that George Santos, because he's a member of Congress, you know, gets special dispensation and gets protection from Kevin McCarthy, it sends a dark message that politicians, some of them are above the law. What happens when that message is sent is people lose trust in their institutions that even if they do the right thing and they go to the polls on Election Day, they do their research and they cast their ballot, that (laughs) the candidate they vote for, you know, not only would betray their trust, but break the law. And the fact that they wouldn't be held accountable immediately, uh, it degrades trust that our institutions are working. America is the greatest democracy on earth, but sometimes we don't act like it. And if George Santos isn't expelled, it's one of those sad instances. Legislator Lafazan, I appreciate your response and reaction. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure.